It sounds like we're ready to go. So. So, uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, colleagues, and friends of Southeast Technological University. You're very welcome to this afternoon's event to mark the publication of the university's first strategic plan, Connecting for Impact. Uh, Richard Hayes is my name. I'm the Vice President for Strategy at the university, and I'm really delighted to be here uh, with our president, uh, Professor Veronica Campbell, to, to thank you on behalf of the university for your support and to speak to you about our plans for the next five years. I could say that uh, it has been a long and arduous journey to get to this moment, to get to the, to the publication of the plan, but that would be wrong. It, hasn't, it has not. Uh, the governing body of SETU put it up to us back as recently as September, October 2022 to very rapidly create the university's first strategic plan, and the governing body drove us to, to, uh, to, to produce this plan within a very short time frame, within six months. The plan was approved just a short number of weeks ago before the anniversary, the first anniversary of the establishment of the university. So it has, it has by no means been a long period of work if, if uh, it has been quite intense. Nor, it's important to say, has it been arduous. Uh, in fact, it's been the opposite for, for myself, and I, I, I know I speak for Veronica too, that it has been an enormous pleasure to engage with colleagues, students, with uh, university partners, supporters from within and outside the university community over the last while, and a real privilege to meet with so many people who are so passionate about the university and who desire it to be successful. It's at once both humbling and challenging to confront such high expectations and ambitions for the university from across the region. And we're confident that in Connecting for Impact, we have risen to that challenge and we earnestly hope we have the framework here to meet and even exceed the expectations of so many people who are so committed to our success. Hi folks, welcome. Hello, you're, you're all so welcome, you're welcome. Thanks for coming along. So, so I, I, I think um, it, it has been a short journey to get to this point actually, uh, an intense period of work to bring us to the publication of this plan today. And, uh, but it has been a, a tremendously uh, exciting journey as, as well. And I think so many people in the region have shown great commitment to this university. And I think their investment in the university is because they see the university as vital to the future of the region. This is articulated in, in the coldness of policy documents for sure, and, and it is, there's no doubt that uh, a successful SETU is critical to the realization of the plans for balanced regional development in the National Development Plan. But I think more importantly, what came across to us over the last few months is that um, there's a deeply felt uh, passion for the Southeast and for the region to be successful. And this is articulated by communities within regional SM SMEs, within other enterprises. In every one of our conversations over the last six months, every individual, whether they were representing a government agency or a commercial sector or a student or staff group or a business, each individual felt passionately about the future of their, their own area and a deep desire to see it do well, to see good educational opportunities presented to people who live there, to see businesses come into the area and thrive, to see people get good employment, and to see the natural world that we live in, and we're so lucky to live in, protected and preserved. So I suppose we framed uh, our strategic plan, yes, as a plan about ACTU and about the reform and development of the university, but also it's important to say that in its own way, we're, we're, we're creating a plan for the Southeast, um, or at least a plan that will contribute to the future development of the region, most importantly. And we're, we've been very anxious to reflect that in the format of this launch. This is one of, this is the second of four events that are taking place across the region today and tomorrow, with the plan launched in each of the four regional counties. 
It's, it's really important for us to signal our regional intent in this way and to show that as the only university in the region, we're not only of the region, but we're for the region. We're committed to being regionally focused, externally focused, and collaborative when it comes to assisting uh, our many stakeholders with the transformation of this region. And as a sign of this, we're so very pleased to be able to have these events outside our campuses with the generosity of our host organizations, in this case, UNAM, uh, and we thank them for, for having us here today and for their ongoing work with and support for SETU. So uh, in these very brief proceedings, we've three sets of speakers other than myself uh, today for you to listen to. First up, we thought you'd like to hear from some of our students actually, who are uh, the proof of the success of our legacy institutions and of, of SETU to date, and a real sign of the promise that there is in the region for the future. So. I'm going to shortly introduce two of our students uh, to speak to you. Uh, then I'll hand over to Veronica, who's going to talk to you about the plan itself and maybe talk about some of the detail in the plan. And finally, uh, Podrick O'Neill will speak to us on behalf of, of UNAM, uh, who are, as, as I said, a valuable partner and also our host today. Uh, you should all have received a copy of the plan, and the plan is available in an executive summary version as well, if anybody wants it, and also Oscoelga for those of you who wish to have it in Irish. Um, but uh, you know you can read these at your leisure. We hope that over the next half hour or so, you'll get a feel for uh, the priorities that we're looking at, the, the building blocks we have in terms of talent and leadership, and the great partnerships we have uh, that, we're, that we're focused on to make SETU a success. So without further ado then, I'll call on Oshin and Tomiwa to say a few words uh, as current students of the university. Hi everyone, my name is Oisin. I'm a student at SETU in the Cybercrime IT Security course, just after finishing my last exams at fourth year. So I'm just going to talk a bit about myself and just why I chose SETU. Um, I grew up locally, so I'm just from on the border Leach and Carlo in Ireland. I went to school in Knockbeg College, and I remember when I was in TY and I was looking at CAO courses, I saw SETU had a new, or SETU had a new course called Cybercrime IT Security. And I knew sure, I wanted to do that course. I put that down, first choice in the CAO. A couple of years later then, got the start in SCTU, which at the time was IT Carlo. Um, one of the main reasons I chose to go to a local college was, firstly, I could stay at home, save a bit of money on not having to travel, not having to pay rent to a different place, different county. Um, the another big reason was I'm heavily involved in sports locally. So I'm involved in karate and taekwondo and boxing as well. There's a lot of different martial arts. So I wanted to be able to keep up my training in my local gyms or my local dojos without having to go find someplace else to train, which I would have had to do if I chose a different place outside of Carlow. So that was one of the main reasons to pick SETU. And then when I got into SETU, there was a local boxing club in the college that I joined. There was a local taekwondo club as well. So I joined that, and I got the chance to represent the college at what I'm best at, which is martial arts, as well as do a course I was really interested in. I got to learn a lot of new skills and new technologies. I've always been interested in computers, so it was great to get the chance to just learn more about the field I was interested in, while also being able to keep up my life outside of college, which was training. Um, last year then, as part of the third year of the course, we get to do a work placement. I was lucky enough to be able to do a work placement here in Unum, and Unum was a great place to work placement in. Um, we got to do this intern challenge, so as well as our regular work, that we got to do as part, as part of being an intern. We were placed into teams of five and given a task that would mimic sort of a problem that regular people working in the workplace would have. So we got to work on that over the course of our internship, got to develop a lot of new skills, and I actually developed my final year project based on the project we did over the course of the internship. So I got a final year project out of that, which we just finished a month or two ago. This year then, as part of fourth year, obviously fourth year is very hard, as many of you will know, so I took a bit of a step back from training, but the institute allowed me to step in as a coaching role in the clubs I was involved in, so I ended up being a coach for the Boxing and Taekwondo Society, and I was also able to set up my own karate club, because the institute didn't have a karate club, and they were very supportive in helping to set up the club, so I set that up, and that's up and running now for any future members of the institute to join, they're welcome to join the karate club that's there. And yeah, the, the SETU allowed me to like, develop my skills in coaching by 
allowing me to coach. And I'm now with the, sorry, I'm now the, one of the coaches for the international karate team, as well as taking extra coaching roles in the clubs that's already involved in outside of the college. So SCTU kind of helped me to learn that I was interested in coaching in the stuff I was already competing in, as well as keeping track of what I was doing in college, like the technology I was learning and the exams I was doing. So there was, there was a lot of support available to me there in regards to um, extracurricular support and support to keep me able to do sports as well as keep studying. I didn't have to choose either studying or sport. Like I was able to do both because SUTU was just so supportive. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much me. I'm going to pass it over to Tommy right here. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Tommy Watt. I'm also a fourth year cybercrime and IT security student, just finished my exams last week. Um, initially, I'd actually decided to go to DCU to do um, electronic engineering, but after weighing my options, um, I decided to come to uh, IT Carlo, now SETU, um, just due to commuting. And also, um, I looked into their um, computer-based uh, courses and cybercrime and IT security really piqued my interest. Um, in first year, there was a lot of help. Um, we had extra um, extra help with like maths and other modules that we didn't really understand just because some people were not fully familiar with the whole um, computer science uh, work. Um, and then that help continued onto second year. And in third year for the work placement, I also was lucky enough to be able to work here in Unum um, due to the help of uh, Anya Byrne. She was in charge of the work placement and she um, really encouraged us to um, you know, put our best foot forward. Um, and working in Unum was a, a great privilege. Um, I learned a lot here in Unum. Um, I also was part of the intern challenge. We worked on automating ServiceNow processes and it was a very fun experience. The entire six months here in Unum was a very fun experience and it actually even uh, boosted me in my college work as well. Uh, my final year project was based on some of the work that I did here in Unum. I was able to build an automated vulnerability scanner. So my work here in Unum was very productive and I got to network and connect with a lot of people. Um, and I would say that you know the, the bond between Unum and IT Carlo is very special. I mean, we even the lab that we use in the college has Unum printed boldly in there. Some of our laptops are um, also sponsored by Unum, so there is a lot of um, quid pro quo going on, and it's uh, it's a very productive and uh, beautiful uh, arrangement that Setu and Unum have. Thanks so much, guys. Uh, it was really good, um, really, really good. And, and the two lads responded instantly when they were asked, to, would they come and speak to uh, uh, an intimidating enough audience like this? So uh, thank you so much for coming. And I think they've illustrated in their own stories an awful lot of what we're trying to do here. Uh, we're trying to keep fantastic talent in the region. Uh, we're trying to nurture that talent and create opportunities for people. We're working closely with industry. To, to create those opportunities. And I think it's embodied in the, the two guys and in their stories. So thank you again for, for sharing those with, with us. Um, I'd hand you over now to uh, our president, Professor Veronica Campbell, who's going to talk to you a little bit more detail about the plan. Good afternoon, everyone. It's a real pleasure for me to welcome our colleagues and distinguished guests to the launch of our strategic plan this afternoon. And a particular welcome to those of you who are joining us online as well today. This is the first strategic plan of our new university, and it creates the framework for our activities for the next five years. We have called our plan Connecting for Impact for good reason. The title highlights the key elements in the mission of our new university. We are here to make a difference to individuals, to communities, to businesses, to villages and towns, to urban and rural areas, especially in our region, the southeast. 
Through our scholarship and our teaching, through our research and innovation activities, Southeast Technological University exists to deliver transformative impact for the people in this region. But we cannot deliver this transformation in isolation. We require connection to progress that transformation. And we're thrilled to be able to launch our plan here today in UNAM to give expression to our desire to connect with communities, enterprises, organisations outside of the university. So you can take the fact that we are launching our plan in locations across the southeast today and tomorrow as a declaration of intent, as a signal that SE2U will continue to be an outward-looking, connected organisation. And I'm very grateful indeed to Porrick O'Neill and his team in UNAM uh, for hosting us today. Thanks very much, Porrick. In developing this plan, we have listened carefully to the many, many people, both within the university and external to the university, who care deeply about our students and the region. It is very clear to us that the region needs this wonderful university to thrive and be a significant enhancement on the fantastic institutions that preceded it. We've listened carefully to the regional demand for a step change in what higher education drive delivers to regional communities. We have heard loud and clear the high expectations that regional communities have of us, and at the same time, the enthusiastic, enthusiastic commitment to working with us to ensure that SETU is successful. We make no apology, therefore, for the ambitious programme we set out in our plan. Some of what is here will see immediate, short-term change, whilst also, la also laying the groundwork for future transformation. But th throughout the plan, you will see, I hope, ambition and determination to deliver the university that this region needs and demands. Here is our vision for the future. Our ambition for the university is to be at the level of a high-performing global university. And this is not a vision that will be fully realized within the time frame of this first plan, but the quality that one expects from a leading global university has to be our goal for SETU. And we take the actions necessary in this plan to put us on that strong trajectory. The aim for SETU is to have transformational impact on the region. And that balanced regional development agenda, which is set out in national policy, requires a significant transformation in regional quality of life, educational outcomes, economic activity, and social development. And we place SETU as the anchor institution of the Southeast in driving that agenda through our own activities within the university, through our support for others, many of whom are gathered here, and as a coordinating force within the Southeast. This plan puts us on the trajectory that will see SETU have impact on the Southeast through list, lifting the level of educational attainment and qualifications, which we know impacts earning power and employability. Increasing our capability in the region in terms of innovation and research, creating from that powerful innovation ecosystem high quality jobs and sustainable employment. Increasing the talent pool in the region, upskilling people in the region, but also attracting talent in. Adding value culturally and socially, enabling our towns and city designate themselves as university towns, a university city, ultimately a learning region, a UNESCO learning region, with the elevated quality of life and attractiveness that that brings. And also by increasing our direct impact on the economy, and by applying the standard multipliers, we would have a direct impact of 900 million euros per annum already through what we do. So by the end of the plan, therefore, we will see the Southeast as an in innovation region and a deeply entrepreneurial region, as a UNESCO learning region, as a more attractive region holding on to our own talent and attracting more talent from outside, a region with a deep skills base, attractive to employers and industry, and a region into which over 34,000 graduates will come from SETU over the next five years. To deliver all of this for the Southeast, we have structured our plan around four key strategic objectives relating to innovation and research, our learners, engagement, and our staff. And I'll now briefly go through the key elements of each of those objectives. 
With regard to research, our focus is on leading the region as an innovation region. This means building our capacity and capability in terms of research performance to be on par with what one would expect from a strong global university. We plan to expand our research base, including doubling our PhD student numbers. We plan to develop a university enterprise quarter on the former Waterford Crystal site as a landing ground for that powerful combination of research, education, enterprise and business development expertise. Let me say something about our position within, within the regional innovation ecosystem before moving on. So you'll see this rather complex looking figure in the plan and it represents the various relationships driving innovation in this region. So key to us in progressing the regional innovation ecosystem are the Enterprise Ireland um, technology gateways, four of which we have within SETU. And these are really critical vehicles for transferring knowledge from the university to enterprise in areas of regional specialism. Our aim through this strategy is to build on this innovation ecosystem, enhancing existing activity and strengthening the key relationships represented here. Clearly, we also contribute to this ecosystem through our graduates and through our lifelong learning activity, creating strong professional development opportunities for those already in the workforce. We look forward to continuing dialogue with you, our internal and our external stakeholders, and how to best enhance this ecosystem and develop its capacity and impact towards the southeast being known as a world-class innovation destination. I firmly believe that we can be leading the way in themes such as offshore renewables, the pharma, health and agri sectors, sustainable business and artificial intelligence, for example, through collaboration, through interdisciplinary thinking and the, using the deep expertise that exists in our university. Our students are, of course, at the heart of the university. We have three broad objectives when it, become, when it comes to our learners and the learning ecosystem within the university. We aim to expand and develop our programme portfolio, especially with the goal of arresting the regional brain drain. As you will be aware, many students leave this region for higher education elsewhere, and many do so because we simply do not offer certain courses. So within the plan, we name some of the new discipline areas we wish to develop in SETU. Teacher education, for instance. And we are currently in a competitive national process for veterinary medicine and pharmacy, the outcome of which we hope to know shortly. Arresting the regional brain drain is a core mission of ACTUs and the retention and development of talent is vital for the future of the region. We will expand the range of access and progression routes and lifelong learning opportunities for students. We will ensure that our curricula equips our students with the skills to navigate the green and digital transitions, that fosters an entrepreneurial mindset and supports them to be active contributors to an ever-evolving workplace, region and world. We will also improve the student experience further and this will involve providing additional student accommodation to ensure that our students have affordable places to live. And also, we want to invest in expanding the student support infrastructures on our campuses with a focus on enabling student success. As I said at the beginning, our focus is being on an engaged, connected university. Our aim is to be recognised as the regional anchor institution. And certainly from our conversations as part of the strategic plan development focus, this is the expectation from you our stakeholders, both internal and external. So for example, we see ourselves as helping to lead the societal pivot towards more sustainable ways of living. Part of this involves leading by example and deploying the necessary technologies and innovative practices to demonstrate how carbon neutrality can be done and sustainability achieved. SE2U will create a new leadership role in sustainability to help embed sustainability in our education research, our operations and our behaviours. Our engagement extends not just regionally but also internationally and we want to greatly enhance our global reach, growing our international student numbers as well as deepening the partnerships that we have with universities across the world. In the context of our international partnership and collaborative networks, I want to mention briefly a priority relationship for us which is the European University project called Connexus, 
a European university for smart urban coastal sustainability. This network, which has been funded by the EU, represents a very great asset for our university and for the region. This is a partnership between nine universities across Europe, including SETU, with the goal of developing a really strong strategic partnership. And the aim of the groups within this alliance is for Connexus to become a global leader in coastal urban sustainability, as well as to promote a European mindset through enabling mobility of our st staff and students between the partners. And this partnership is amongst a number of deep international partnerships and alliances that we want to develop as part of our plan. I also want to mention some key regional relationships that we will build on on the coming period. Recent policy developments in relation to a unified tertiary education system have really encouraged us to strengthen our relationship with the regional ETBs. We indicate in our plan a strong desire to build on the many years of work done to date to create progression opportunities for students between further and higher education, for example, and to strengthen the relationship between the university and these ETBs. We have a common purpose, especially in relation to the provision of skills, and we plan to develop further our common approach and ensure that we share expertise and assets for the betterment of our students and the region. I wish to draw your attention to an action in our plan in relation to Carlo College. We already have a very strong relationship and we will now seek funding to investigate how best to develop that relationship over time. And I want to acknowledge the support of Father Con and his staff and we look forward to working closely together in the best interests of our students and the region. SETU will also continue to develop our strong relationship with the Irish Defence Forces and the Irish Prison Service as an excellent example of partnership in support of a skilled and contemporary public service. To meet the challenges of becoming the kind of university we want to be, we will have to reshape the operations and structures of the existing organisation. We've obviously been involved in a merger programme now for a number of years, and designation as a university does not in itself accomplish the very large body of work that has to be done to ensure seamless cross-campus operations. We continue to invest in and roll out a large merger programme across all our systems, policies and processes, and will continue to do so for much of the early phase of this plan. Our staff, it's important to say, are our greatest asset. We need to ensure that our staff are empowered to be the innovative practitioners, educators and researchers that we know they are. We want to ensure staff on all of our campuses and across academic and professional, managerial and support staff areas have good and transparent career progression options. And we are also focused on ensuring that equality, diversity, inclusion and belonging are embedded in all that we do. These aims are all expressed in the plan in the shape of 12 strategic objectives, and you'll see quite a considerable amount of detail um, associated with each of those objectives. We've identified a number of key enablers to ensure the successful implementation of the plan. And in brief, these involve developing the necessary infrastructure across human, physical and digital to accommodate our growth and our ambitions, and in having the necessary systems and structures internally to ensure the delivery of our priorities. Let me confirm some of the key capital development projects over the next five years as indicated in the plan. Over the next five years, we will deliver 50,000 square metres of new space for teaching and research across our campuses. We will develop the former Waterford Crystal site and create a new modern campus in Wexford. Refurbishing existing space and deep energy retrofit projects are also planned, as well as initiatives to meet the demand for student accommodation. I want to mention some critical enablers um, that are not within the university's control, but nonetheless do impact considerably on our ability to deliver. These are all subject to current discussion with the Department of Further and Higher Education and other agencies. And I do want to acknowledge here the sterling support of Minister Harris and department colleagues, as well as our colleagues in the Higher Education Authority. All have been proactive in supporting the development of SETU and are heavily invested in the success of our university. 
As mentioned a moment ago, a significant capital fund is required to, de to deliver the modern university for this region. We are engaged, as I've pointed out, in a complex merger process and have benefited from good support from government for this. And we look forward to continued support in what is a complex and largely behind the scenes activity. I've commented already on the uniqueness of SETU when it comes to the Southeast region. It's also important to recognize the uniqueness of our student cohort. We have a larger than average population of students from non-traditional groups, from families who have not sent students uh, to university before. We have a large population of students with disabilities. We have a very large population of part-time students and lifelong learners. I should also say that post-COVID, our learner support staff report very considerable demand from students for mental health supports and assistance. We will need from the state investment to ensure equity of treatment for those groups to ensure the best outcomes for them and to ensure that they can continue to deliver for the Southeast. I've already pointed out the elevation in research performance that's needed if the university is to achieve its ambitions. We are focused on some key up, um, upcoming funding calls as potential sources to support our research capacity building. And we also see the creation of the full professor grade as really critical to elevate research performance in our technological university. I raise all of these things in this company conscious that we have here many of the leaders from enterprise and society in the region. And I ask that you continue to support us as we seek to advance our agenda on all of these fronts. In conclusion, we see ourselves at the start of an exciting, rewarding, ambitious journey. But with your continued support, we will ultimately see that journey being transformative for our communities, for our region, for Ireland and the wider world through SETU Connecting for Impact. So very finally, I'd like to thank um, all of you for attending or, or joining uh, today and to thank everyone who's contributed so much to the consultation process, which has shaped the development of this final version of the plan. I'd like to acknowledge um, the um, very um, um, constant support and deep support from our governing body, which is chaired by Paddy Prendergast. And a particular thanks to Richard Hayes um, for the fantastic contribution he has made over the last number of months in bringing this plan to fru fruition here this week. So thanks very much, Richard, and thank you to you all. Thanks. Thanks, Veronica. And uh, as we said, there are copies of the plan available in, in long and short versions um, where you can, and there's extensive elaboration on all of those, those points there, and we really encourage you to, to, re to read it. Uh, finally, can I ask uh, Padraig O'Neill from Unum to say a few words, uh, bo both as our host and more importantly as a valued collaborator and partner with SETU. It's really great to be here, so I would like to ask him to speak. Thanks, Padraig. Seems a bit late to be welcoming you all, but welcome, and uh, it's great to have you here. And I suppose, you know, I suppose strategies are easy in some ways, but I suppose the marker, I suppose, is about how you actually go about it and the actions that you actually take. And I think Veronica was out to us within two or three weeks of being appointed uh, last year. And I think that was a real sort of first marker for us in terms of actually the engagement or change of engagement with the college, with the university, et cetera. And it already feels more joined up for somebody that's actually trying to engage with the actual community. So I'm delighted to have you all here today, and uh, I suppose a hugely important day for SETU, but I think it's been said already, it's also a hugely important day for all of us and for you know, everybody living in the region, working in the region, or that sort of has ambitions you know, for the actual region in terms of growth. Uh, by having a, a significant technological university in the region, it amplifies, connects, and hopefully elevates us all into something which is much more collective potential. Um, our story, I suppose, here in Carlo, in Unum, in, in uh, Ireland, um, has, you know, has been always tied to the actual technological colleges and talent that is actually here locally. Um, we are, I suppose, firstly, I suppose, for people that don't know us, we are a large US insurer. Uh, we provide insurance to US employers, UK and Polish employers, that they provide to their end employees. And that has a reach of 45 million people. 
that we actually have you know, on our books. So the people working here in this center, in this technological center, have that reach, that impact, in terms of what they're actually working on. Um, we located here 15 years ago this year, uh, in May, so right, right on time. Uh, so thanks for that. Uh, so well aligned again. And um, it was really a technology talent play. And it was basically saying, okay, what can we, where can we go to add technological change talent to our US colleagues that will help us to actually reinvent our future? Right, in terms of how we go to, business, go to business or go to engage with our customers, et cetera, right? And I suppose that being in Carlo, just an hour outside Dublin, having a local technological college that we could actually build strong relationships with, and I see a lot of you know, our key stakeholders out there like Nigel and others or whatever there today as well. And that's been a very, it was a very easy thing to actually happen you know, from day one. The IDA did a great job, but then the, the college, the RTC at the time, did a great job as well in terms of actively engaging with us helping to shape courses, helping to listen to actual feedback, et cetera. And we see a lot of these tenants as being sort of core to how the university and Veronica's style in terms of actively engaging out into the actual industry are going to continue and only amplify from there. Um, so the, uh, we now employ about 240 highly skilled digital transformation professionals here, and about 40 to 50% of those are, have come from uh, SETU, either Carlo or Waterford. Uh, we have a, it was great to see Tommy Wa and Oshin and Ellen here today as well in terms of past intern students and our internship, you know, has some, it was something that we developed locally with Carlo at the time and it's something that's been recognised uh, nationally as, we, you know, was the basis of us winning the uh, Excellence in Talent Development Award winner from Technology Ireland uh, two years ago. And it's something that we've scaled over the last couple of years to Waterford and now to Minute as well. And we now have over 30 interns with us at the moment. We had 25 last year, 18 of those converted into full-time employees. And in, over that pandemic period, we've added about 80, uh, we, you know, we filled 80 roles last year alone, and uh, we've nearly doubled over the pandemic period. And a, lot, a large part of that has been our tight link with the actual colleges, that intern program, that shaping of the actual courses, tracking past graduates or people looking to move back into the region that had a good experience while they were going to colleges, et cetera, here locally. Uh, it's, it's been easily built from day one in terms of the, the linkage, uh, but I think the connecting for impact theme makes a lot of sense, you know, and I think it's up to us all to actually, I suppose, come in behind the actual strategy and have to reinforce it in the region and make sure that the actual university actually gets the actual support that it needs. Um, there are many elements to our partnership, the interim program I've talked about. Um, we've sort of have, uh, been working with the colleges in terms of aligning our, their courses that the guys are actually doing to be more aligned to our business needs, and that's worked really, really well. Uh, we've been partnering on key elements where we're aligned in the community as well, so things like women in STEM or actively working, you know, encouraging uh, second-level students into careers within technology itself. Also around things like uh, founding of our SIDRAS and stuff like that locally in terms of an insurance institute within the actual college a number of years ago. Again, a hugely positive thing for, uh, for the likes of ourselves, large insurance companies locally, to actually get that pipeline of talent coming through. Um, so the, I suppose myself, I'm a past graduate of SETU, of WRTC 30 plus years ago, and it was talked about at that stage in terms of a uh, university for the Southeast. So great to see it finally, finally here. And these things always take a bit, a bit longer uh, than probably originally intended, but I think it's great that we actually have it here. And we look forward to continuing our relationship with SETU and continue to grow, especially in the areas of applied research and learning. So taking it up a level in terms of value, uh, not only getting the talent in, but also working in terms of postgraduate and other initiatives like that and, and applied research within the actual institutes. Uh, the potential is huge, and we're confident under Veronica's team and leadership uh, that it will be realized. Uh, we do note the old adage in the, that is the parish that raise, raises the youth. So I think we need to just remember that, that I suppose there's a lot of support needed to go from a document into the actual reality. And I think as it's coming around to you know, various election campaigns and other things like that as well, we do well to recommend or to remind ourselves of that and make sure that we all create the, the situation for success. And I suppose last, lastly, just to say the best of luck to SETU. And uh, we're very proud to be partners with SETU. And we see it as a core part of our own growth going forward. And we continue to you know, partner at any level possible uh, with the actual institute. So thank you all. Th thank you, Parik, for that. And, and, uh, and, and also, again, for your, your very, very kind welcome here. Uh, before we conclude, uh, I want to acknowledge 
the tremendous effort that's gone into creating this plan, as I said, in a very intense uh, period of time by an awful, an awful lot of people. And uh, I want to thank all of those, many of them here, who participated in the consultation process, engaged in workshops, met with us, wrote to us, uh, had email exchanges. Uh, it, it was fantastic. This includes many people from companies outside the organization, from agencies, and also from many, many people within the university. And we aimed from the beginning to have a deeply consultative process, notwithstanding the time frame, and, and I think we, we got that, or hope we got that. Colleagues were tremendously giving of their time and their ideas. I want to thank sincerely our trade union representatives for their engagement with the consultation and the many really, really productive discussions we had. I want to thank colleagues on the Academic Council and the Student Union, and again, all colleagues across and outside the university. I, and I hope everybody who reads the plan will see something of themselves in it and their own contribution. I want to thank uh, colleagues from the executive team who chaired working groups and to thank the many, many people who participated in those groups, maybe over 100. And they produced these enormously rich reports that I think are, are uh, far exceed the value that, that was in them for, for the purposes of the plan, but will be real repositories of ideas and practical steps through the coming period, which, is, which was really terrific. Um, uh, Veronica mentioned our governing body, and the governing body was tremendously engaged with the process from the beginning and engaged with the detail as well as with the generality, which is very, very important. Very helpful practical suggestions came from members of the governing body. And of course, the governing body drove on in terms of the pace. I was saying to somebody earlier that if it was an academic thing, should we be thinking about it for two years, you know? But the governing body said, we want this and we want it soon and, and let's uh, get this done. And I think it, it's hugely valuable that we have this plan in such a short period of time. Finally, lots of people contribute in very practical ways to the production of the plan and across many offices in many areas in, in SETU. Uh, it's always dangerous to name people, but I'm going to take the risk uh, and name a few people who were, who were particularly helpful. Uh, I want to acknowledge the support of Graham Love, Laura O'Neill, and colleagues from Mazars who provided assistance particularly early on in the process. I want to thank Marco Dowd and Fintan Bracken who worked on the data that informs the KPIs. And uh, uh, we set out from the beginning that, to, to say that this would be a data-informed plan and indeed our implementation plan will be data-informed. So it was great to have the support of Mark and Fintan and colleagues also in the research offices who were able to provide us really good quality data and good analysis. I want to thank uh, David Ryan, he's here I think today, and, and Brian Foley in the TU Project Office for their support. August Mila Buigas Le Dorothy, as Asan Astrocon Gaelga, August Buigas Fresh and Le Sean O'Hay, Seamus O'Dulun, August Ian Grant. Thanks to Dorothy for doing the translation, and to Sean, Seamus, and Ian for their assistance also with translating certain elements of the plan into Irish. Chris O'Reardon and Mary Delaney uh, gave great help and support with proofreading. And Fripps took uh, literally back of the napkin diagrams and translated into usable designs and that, that are, that are um, evident in the plan, which is terrific. And Philip McCaskill of McCaskill Design did really top class design work on the finished product. And uh, you'll see that in, in front of you today. And I just wanted to mention Philip, uh, he, he, he did a lot of work again in a short time period. Tom Ahern and Fintan McCarty did a great presentation, which is on the website. And finally, I want to thank uh, uh, Catherine O'Neill in my own office for her calm and diligent work in keeping me organized and uh, helping us through the planning process and also helping with these events, as did Anne and Breda in the President's office and Patricia Madden, Olive O'Connor, Claire Quinn, all of whom helped with planning for, for, for the launches today and tomorrow. And Owen and Keane are doing tremendous work with streaming and with the tech. And thanks also finally to John Power in the, in the TU Project uh, Management Office for his fantastic work both through the design phase and also in organizing today's events. Thanks so much, John. I hope I haven't left anybody out. If I do, I, I sincerely apologize. But many, many people contributed to this document and to, to these events, and it was a, a real collective effort. Um, we're so very pleased that, that you've come out, out to support us today, and we thank you for your support for SETU. And as, as Parik has said, we depend on that support. Uh, our success will be enabled by the strong support of others outside the university, including government. And we need all of you here, uh, but especially our partners in other agencies, in politics, in local government, in business, to keep the pressure on um, to deliver on the ambition that we all share. And my, finally, uh, we, we gather today not just to celebrate a milestone in the development of SETU, 
As we said, we wanted this event to give public expression to our commitments to the region, but also we wanted this to be an event where publicly, on behalf of the university, we stood up and sort of demanded you hold us to account. Um, we don't convene here just to celebrate a job well done, we con convene to celebrate a job well started, I say. And we really expect you and the external stakeholders of the university to, to uh, hold us to account in implementing this plan so that in five years we can come back, hopefully to hear it, um, to acknowledge the progress made towards realizing the ambitions we have for the Southeast, which is ultimately what it's all about. So the work starts now and we're so pleased to have your support in, in